Okay, we're out here today and we're going to talk to Larry Mayer about uh, one of the energy efficient buildings that he's working on putting together and he's going to talk about some of the things that go into uh, making this such an efficient building and what's going to make it more comfortable and cost effective for the homeowners as it goes into it. Larry, can you point out a few things that uh, are going into this building site here? Okay, Carl. Uh, what we're trying to do here is that uh, we're trying to keep our building load down and a big key element of that is reducing our moisture infiltration into the building. So what you're seeing here is we have exterior foam behind this six mil three ply vapor barrier. And that vapor barrier goes down to the pad and, and out four feet from around the building so that we shed the water away from the building and the typical absorption of moisture into the foundation wall that a lot of times moves into the building is kept away. So we've done that all the way around the building here. Uh, and then at the top of the foundation wall, you can see that, that this has all been primed because moisture will move up from the ground and move up through the sill plate and will uh, come into the house. So we've primed the outside and this priming surface not only is a perm one, one perm less vapor barrier, but it also is an adheres barrier so that we can actually glue our foam right to it. So it gives, it serves two purposes. And then here, uh, this structure out here is a three season porch and it's unheated. So we have a thermal break, two inches of, of uh, high density foam that is a thermal break so we're not transferring energy from inside the house to an unheated space. Common error that we see in a lot of structures, they don't put thermal breaks in. The next thing that we've did on this structure is you'll see that there's tape here. This is butylene tape that's actually adhered to the foundation wall on this primer that will, and the second half of this tape will go up against the OSB on the house structure and act as a rim joist air barrier and a vapor barrier and so that that runs all the way around. Okay I noticed you know you've got your high density foam here but the uh, the majority of the foam that we're using underneath the slab and along the outside foundation walls it's not necessarily high density can you? Right uh, uh, typically this is uh, 15 to 20 psi uh, rated foam. This foam here is rated at 15 psi but it's not uh, extruded polystyrene, it's expanded polystyrene or beadboard. We like using beadboard because it's a flexible foam. It doesn't break up under walking and traffic, under backfilling issues and so it keeps its integrity and gives us a good tight moisture and thermal seal. So that's largely why we, we use this around. It's also much more cost effective. Generally less than half the cost of extruded polystyrene foam. I know some folks are uncomfortable with it because the, the moisture issues are concerned with it absorbing moisture as opposed to the, uh, the extruded. That, that would be an issue if you didn't have a water management system. But we have a water management system here with this three ply poly that we put on here. There are a lot of typical one ply polys that you can buy out there but they're not as durable. They tend to uh, crack and break up but if you go Spend 20 bucks more a roll, you get a lot more durable surface. And all your joints taped and overlapped. Yeah, everything's overlapped uh, six inches to a foot with, with a good durable industrial tape, uh, not just uh, hoping that uh, Tyvex tape works in every situation. Get the tape that fits to the vapor barrier. And what do we have underneath the ground here that we can't see as far as the insulation? Well, what we can't see is this structure is built close to the river, and so there's a concern about overland flooding, so this structure was built up high. So our actual pad is only two feet below the level of the ground. So typically we'd have a huge concern for frost. And so what we've done here is, is following the uh, uh, shallow foundation frost protected system developed in Europe by the the Swedes and the Norwegians and then studied by the University of Minnesota. They put out a engineering bulletin in 2005 saying that in our climate zone we need to have four feet of exterior foam apron around this structure uh, and two feet down minimum R10. If we do that the frost will not come in underneath that foam, will not have heaving. So it, it, it provides us a watershed, keeps the dirt ground underneath there dry so we have less moisture absorption into the structure and it also saves us energy. So it has three, three good benefits. Over here, uh, in order to manage thermal loss in the garage, 
knowing that our garage door comes down on the inside of our exterior wall, uh, we've put ourselves a thermal break at that inside point. In order to support the interior slab, we've dry stacked concrete blocks up off the pad. And then they just come up and then uh, when the garage slab gets poured, it will float and ride on this dry stack footing wall here and then the rest of the foundation. And then this foam will be set down about an inch and a half from the top of the concrete. And then we will have a uh, treated lumber on top of that and then we'll have half inch nylon sheet on top of that. And then that whole uh, wood structure in the concrete pouring phase is wrapped in poly so that we can pop that board out or replace it if we have to. Uh, the board gives us a structural material uh, so that we can attach the uh, nylon sheet to that. We have a durable surface and then we can trim that off with uh, some industrial uh, caulks and sealants. Uh, but it gives us a nice durable thermal break. And then the outside driveway apron will actually sit on the foundation wall. So rather than having that driveway apron settle on you, we're not going to have that problem also. So, so that's one of the unique things we've done here in the garage area. Just a little bit of planning ahead. We probably have less than $100 into this thermal break in materials and just planning ahead.